Welcome back children once again. This is Ansu here. I hope you went through the video posted earlier. In that, we talked about the history of computers which included Abacus, Pascaline, Napier's Bones, Difference Engine and Analytical Engine. I hope you understood the concept, right? Now, let's move to the remaining part of this chapter. The topic we are going to discuss today is generation of computers. What are the different generations of computers and which all years are classified for the different generations of computers. Shall we move on? Generation of computers. The evolution of the present day computer is classified into five generations of computers. That is, there are five different generations of computers that you need to learn about. Each generation is marked by a major technological development that has changed the operations of computers. From one generation to another, there is a big change in the technology used which made a lot of things easier for people from one generation to another. This has resulted in increase of speed, storage capacity and reliability as well as decrease in cost and size. That is, from one technology to another or from one generation to another, the speed of the computer has increased very high or increased drastically. Storage capacity also has increased very much and reliability as well as the cost and size. The cost of the system also has reduced over the years and the size of the system also has reduced a lot over the years. So from one generation to other, these five points have changed. That is speed, storage capacity, reliability, cost and size. Different generations of computers. In the last slide itself, we discussed there are five different generations of computers. It is divided into first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation and fifth generation. The years which is accounted for these generations are also listed. Let me read out. The first generation of computers are from the years 1940 to 1955. Second generation of computers are from 1956 to 1963. Third generation computers are from 1964 to 1971. And fourth generation computers are from 1972 to 1980. Currently, we are running in the fifth generation, which is still under expansion. It is between 1980 to present. Shall we see all the generations one after the other? First generation. It was built using vacuum tubes. The picture of a vacuum tube is placed on the top. If you see my cursor, you can see the first picture is that of a vacuum tube. It is not a small device. It was very big in size. So the overall structure of the machine was very very huge. Slow operating system. It used to take a lot of time to process data so it had a longer processing time due to slow operating system. Produced large amounts of heat. Since a lot of parts were being used at the same time a lot of heat was emitted. Examples are UNIVAC, ENIAC and EDVAC. I'll repeat the examples one more time. UNIVAC, ENIAC and EDVAC. The picture of a UNIVAC is kept in the bottom here. If you look at my cursor, you can see that. The top one is that of a vacuum tube and the bottom one is that of a UNIVAC. So, let me explain one more time. First generation computers used vacuum tubes. Its operating system was slow, so it took a longer time for processing. 
it produced large amounts of heat. Shall we move on to the next one? Second generation. In this, they changed the vacuum tubes into smaller devices. It was known as a transistor. It was made of silicon or germanium. So use of transistors made of silicon or germanium. The picture of a transistor is placed in the bottom. It was a very small device compared to that of a vacuum tube. It was comparatively smaller in size with lesser processing time. The size was smaller compared to the first generation of computers and it took lesser time for processing the data. Generated less heat, thus less prone to failure. That is, the heat emission from these transistors was very less compared to that of a vacuum tube. So, the output was better in the case of a second generation computer. Examples are IBM 1400 and 7049 series and IBM 350. So, these series IBM stands for International Business Machines. Shall we move on to the next slide? The third generation. In the third generation, they changed the components again. They changed from transistor to integrated chips or ICs. In an integrated chip, there were thousands of transistors placed together. So, the size of the system became even smaller in the third generation. So it was smaller, reliable and efficient. Reliable means it can be depended upon very easily and it was very efficient. It was very good in doing its operations. Increase in speed, commercially cheap and low maintenance. There was an increase in the speed of its processing. It was very cheaper compared to the transistor generation and it had very low maintenance. That is, it did not require much cost to maintain it. Example is IBM or International Business Machines. Fourth generation. The fourth generation was even smaller compared to the third generation of computers. It was faster, reliable, accurate and portable. In this generation, the laptops came into being. You could take it from one place and put it in another place. It was easy to carry around and it was very faster compared to the third generation of computers. More powerful, compact, low maintenance, cheap and affordable. It was more powerful than the previous generation. Compact means smaller in size compared to the previous generation. Low maintenance means cost of running it was very less. It was cheap. It was less costly compared to the previous machine and it was very affordable for people to buy. I have placed two pictures here for you. That is top one is belongs to IBM PC and the bottom one is Apple Macintosh. It gave rise to personal computers leading to internet and networking systems. Since it became cheaper compared to the third generation, a lot of people were able to buy these machines and access the internet. Fifth generation. The fifth generation is still in the development phase. That is still people are developing. Your phones that you use or the computers that you use are voice recognizable, right? That voice recognition software is called artificial intelligence. That is, it is based on artificial intelligence or AI. Have you heard something called Alexa? There's an advertisement going on TV frequently for Amazon Alexa. That is, a person can tell Alexa, Alexa, play a set of songs. Then Alexa will play it for you by using the internet, right? That is artificial intelligence, just an example. Then if you are using a Mac phone, you can easily talk through Siri. There is a speech recognition software called Siri, which answers all your queries. Another example for it is Cortana, capable of understanding human speech. 
it is able to understand what you are saying. Almost all languages it can understand. Example is Cortana and Siri. With this, we come to the end of today's presentation. Please read through your textbook and see these videos at least two to three times to understand the concept. Thank you.